My name is Dr. Katie Mack. I'm an assistant professor of physics here at NC State. I'm Dr. Laura Bottomley. I am a teaching associate professor here at NC State in the College of Engineering. I study the universe. I study cosmology, all that fun stuff. And I am an electrical engineer, and I'm also really interested in space. I actually became an engineer because I wanted to be an astronaut. And then when I decided not to become an astronaut, because being a professor was a really cool job. Yeah. Yeah. So I became a professor, and now I actually teach people how to teach. What does the universe? First one. What does the universe look like? What does the universe look like? Uh, it depends on how closely you're looking at different parts of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and and in what wavelength of light? So, in in visible light, you know, you look around the universe, you see galaxies, you see stars. Um, in microwave light, you see a glow all around you from the the afterglow of the Big Bang. Ooh. So it really depends. That sounds like um, fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but mostly when we look out into the into space, we see darkness with little bits of light, and the darkness actually tells us something about the history of the universe. Um, the only reason the sky is dark at night is because the universe is not infinitely old. Uh, and infinitely large at the same time. So if, if the universe were infinitely large and infinitely old, then everywhere you'd look, you'd see a star somewhere far away. And so the whole sky would be bright. That's really and, cool. Yeah, and so it's only the fact that the universe had a beginning that means that if you look far enough away, you're actually looking so far back in time that there weren't any stars yet. Oh. And that's why, that's why there are dark parts between the stars and the galaxies because the universe is not infinitely old. So not every line of sight ends on the surface of the star. That's really neat, I like that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's good, I think. We don't need to answer anymore. No, I'm not <laughs> um, Okay, you ready for a question I'm two? ready for a question two. Okay, Google wants to know, what does the universe sound like? What does the universe sound like? Uh, the universe is quiet. Uh, the If you go out into space, there's uh, spaces a vacuum or pretty close to it, and so sound waves can't travel through the vacuum space. But if you go far enough back in time, in the beginning, in, uh, in the early universe, for the first 380,000 years or so, the universe was loud. It was so dense that it was filled with this like plasma, a uh, hot, dense gas, and there were sound waves going through it. And so you could actually see uh, in the background light from the Big Bang, you can actually see like imprints of these sound waves, and we oh. use that to study how the universe began. Really? Yeah. How cool. Yeah, it's very oh. cool. Oh, I like it. I like it. So there's no music of the spheres or anything like that. Not anymore. No. Yeah. But um, but in the in the very beginning, the the there was sound waves. Like we can actually see the sound waves in the way that they distributed matter around. Oh. It's very cool. Ooh, I like it. Yeah. The universe, pretty cool stuff. Yeah. All right, your turn. All right. Okay, so these are questions. How do astronauts? Okay. All right, you ready? I uh, probably. Okay. How do astronauts sleep? Aha, uh -huh. how do they sleep? Apparently, the answer to this is apparently not well. Really? Yes, because uh, I think it's hard to sleep in space. I think your body is accustomed to gravity. So uh, to find out the answer to this, since I've never slept in space, Yeah. I asked some astronauts. Okay. So over the course of my life, I've been able to meet several astronauts, mm -hmm. and and so I asked them. Mm -hmm. So first of all, because there's microgravity in space, right. they which means just a little teeny bit of gravity. Yeah. They uh, they have to strap themselves in. Oh, so they don't like drift around. So they don't drift around because if you rolled over or something like that, you would cause yourself to, and you, it would be a yeah. kind of a bummer to wake up and bumping like, into something. And like there's air currents and stuff, right? The yeah, kind of I would like expect there's air currents and it, who knows, yeah. all kind of, it'd be bad. So okay. they have sleeping bags uh -huh. and they can strap themselves to the wall pretty much okay. anywhere they want. Okay. They On the International Space Station, they do have a little cubicle that's just theirs. Mm -hmm. They can sleep in there, but they don't have to. Okay. They can sleep any way they want. So they strap themselves into the sleeping bag. But I'm told that they have really strange dreams really? in space. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. I've always I've always wondered if you're sleeping in space, like you're in orbit, right? 
Yeah. Do you do you ever have that thing where you wake up feeling like you're falling? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't always, know. That's, you're always falling, right? Like that that's what really... orbiting is. Okay, so next time so I see weird. my astronaut friend, I'm going to ask okay. that question. All right. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm really curious about that. Yeah, that's very interesting. Okay. All right. Okay. Question two. How do astronauts shower? So it's interesting. Mm. So how astronauts shower has actually changed over the years. Okay. So because I wanted to be an astronaut like a long time ago, mm-hmm. I'm a grandmother now, um, Skylab was the, the space station at the time right, right. And when I was, when I was young. And um, before Skylab, astronauts didn't shower. Like were they just not up long enough? Or for they were up. They weren't up terribly long, but mm. they got stinky. Okay. Mm-hmm. So in Skylab, they put they gave them the ability to shower. Okay. And so they basically would have this. They had this tube thing that they could raise up and fix to the ceiling around them. Okay. They could squirt water on themselves. Uh-huh. Okay. And then they had a vacuum. They had to suck all the water up before huh. they were allowed to put the. And put, did, put thing, did it escape or like is this I like suspect it could it was sealed yeah but I I wouldn't be surprised to learn um, that they didn't get it all right right because how hard is that yeah. to vacuum all the water there's droplets everywhere and yeah, yeah, yeah. so now on the International Space Station they can take a shower like that if they want to mm-hmm. but mostly they just take sponge baths I saw a video once of like hair washing in space where they have some kind of separate thing that they do for that yeah I saw that too I think they use dry shampoo a lot, oh, okay. um, but you've got to be really careful because mm. you can't have part- particulate things floating around. You could right, breathe right, it in; right. it could cause all kind of problems. Oh. So, yeah, it's okay. very interesting. And and the the whether or not water is absorbed by things like if you were to pour water in a, a washcloth mm-hmm. at in on Earth, it just goes into the washcloth. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily because it's it's pulled in by capillary action, right, not right, by right. gravity. Right. Okay. Right. So yeah. you have to manipulate so it, to, really... it to get it in there. Huh. The same thing for your hair. If oh, you put water on right. your hair or something like that, it might so, just bounce off. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. react. It's the same oh. way. Okay. So it's kind of cool. Interesting. All right. Next one. How do astronauts use the bathroom? I've been waiting for that. <laughs> by the way, if you ever this meet is... an astronaut, do not ask them that. They hate so being asked that. They, yeah. It must be every. They, they must get that every single. Every day. single time. So, yeah. um, so I looked. I looked up a little bit of the history of this. So I've actually okay. seen a toilet from from the Skylab. Okay. And it looks a lot like a little big cube with a toilet seat on it. It's okay. not terribly different. Um, but the very first missions, the Mercury mission, mm-hmm. they. They didn't have the ability to go to the bathroom because it was only supposed to last an hour or so. Okay. Right? But they didn't account for the fact that they'd be sitting on the launch pad for like oh. four hours. Yeah. So are you ready for this? Mm. The first Mercury astronaut actually went in his suit. Oh. He shorted out a couple of sensors. Oh, God. But it wasn't bad. Okay. So then they had to think about it af- after right, that, right? right? So so here's how it actually works. So there's they can sit on the toilet if they want to. Okay. Okay? Or they can just use this sort of like a vacuum hose kind okay. of thing. Yeah. Um that'll that'll uh attach to their body. Mhm. You can mm-hmm. imagine this. Yeah. In all the right places. Right. Um if they want to do that. In either case, it's mm-hmm. it's positive airflow that makes the stuff go where you want it to go. Right, right. Um, because you don't uh, want it floating around. That's happened before. I I heard that there's there's some transcript from one of the lunar missions. Yes. Where people are talking about something floating something around. Something floating around, and somebody yeah. says, "Whose is this? This is not mine." And it's yeah. I suspect a lot of joking uh, was done yeah. about that. But uh, yeah, that would be unpleasant. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. So it's a lot like a vacuum, but not quite like a sealed vacuum cleaner, which right. would, of course, hurt you. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. But but then what af- what happens after they go to the bathroom is even more interesting, hmm. right? So so the solid stuff mm. just gets compacted into these bricks. Okay. All the water gets removed from it mm-hmm. and ejected into space. Like to burn up in the atmosphere? Mm-hmm. Huh. Well, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, the liquid stuff gets captured and recycled. Right, right. Yeah, they they drink their pee. They do. Like, well, for, not. I mean, they it gets yeah. recycled and cleaned and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, 
uh, well, they drink the water that's been through them and then and then they use it again and again, so right? So yeah. Which makes perfect sense yeah. because yeah, you if you to, think right? about it, water's incredibly heavy. Yeah, and it costs a lot of money to launch stuff into space, so you don't want to yeah. launch any more than you have to. Yeah. Huh. I so I heard something else about astronauts. Oh yeah. Peeing. Okay. Um, I, what I heard was that because they don't have gravity, they can't feel they can't feel it when their bladder gets full because it doesn't. Oh, like, because it doesn't sit on yeah, the nerves that yeah, our bladder does on Earth. Yeah, That's so, interesting. So they have to have like a schedule. Oh, they wow. have to yeah. So they have to make sure they go like every two hours or something. So it's a little bit like having won't... a baby again, where you have to when you're potty training, you take them. With it. Yeah. Well, I did, they have to potty train too. Do they? They oh, do. So, so before they leave the surface, they have to learn how to oh, use that. Use, oh, right. Yeah. 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 So it's pretty interesting. Hmm. Oh, thank you. All right. So this one, we're gonna do. We're gonna do these. I think we're gonna take turn. Right? Yeah. Or, or, or somehow, I mean, do it yeah. together somehow. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So between okay. the two of us. Okay. See if we can do this. Okay. All right. What are the planets? What are the planets? Hmm. Okay. Okay. Shall we do it? Yeah. Let's do it. First one. What are the planets in order? In order. I, I assume they mean in order from the sun. That's to, what I would assume that they would mean, too. Okay. All right. Yeah, so, so Mercury. Mm-hmm. Venus. Earth. Mars. Jupiter. Well, you forgot the asteroid belt, didn't you? That's not a planet. Well, okay. It used to be, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Fine, fine. Okay. So Jupiter. Jupiter. Then Saturn. Uranus. Neptune. Then we're done. That's it. Yep. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless you're... I mean, there are dwarf planets, you know, in various places, but mm-hmm. uh, but that's 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 the planets. I miss Pluto. I know. It's it's still a wonderful world. Yeah, it yeah. It's a beautiful yeah. world. It's got its companion world. It does its thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I still like it. I, don't. I still count it. It's nice. It's a nice planet. Dwarf. I'm planet. an engineer. I can count if I want to. Okay. All right. I'm, oh yeah, I'll you can. This. All right. What are the planets named after? Ah. They're gods, yeah. Yeah, Roman yeah. gods, I think, yeah. exclusively. Is that right? Yeah. Venus, Mars. Yeah. Earth is not named after a god. What is Earth named after? I don't know. I don't know either. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we'll figure that out. That's yeah. a good question. The rest of them are named after gods. Yeah. And so are most of the moons. Yeah. I love that, I love that Venus is named Venus because it's pretty. Like, even from when they all they could see was a little bright spot in the sky they thought it was really pretty isn't that hilarious yeah i mean it is pretty if you go look at venus you know the clouds and all that kind of stuff well even just like the dot even when you're just standing here and you're looking with your eyes and it's this little bright dot i think it's i think it's beautiful yeah i like them all yeah no they're great they're great i just (laughs) i just love the idea that people saw like all they could see was a spot in the sky and they said oh that's pretty we're gonna call it after name it after the goddess of love yeah that's great Hmm. all right Next. All right, here we go. What are the planets made of? What are they made of? Well, they're, I mean, most of them are made of like, well, so the terrestrial ones are made of. The terrestrial rock. ones, meaning the, like the ones that are closer. Yeah, so to... Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. Right. They're t- the terrestrial ones. They have surfaces, so they're made of like rock, you know, mostly, and then with metal in the core. Maybe um, some molten rock, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the other ones are mostly gas, mostly hydrogen. Um, they don't have surfaces, so the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. I heard that if you could put Saturn in an ocean on the Earth, it would float. Yeah, it would dissolve, I guess. Oh, well, <laughs> but, um, maybe it would float first. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's less dense than water, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, it's, so it would be buoyant if you could keep it all Presuming together. you could do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so because they're they're mostly like cloud for they're mostly gas they're gas giants right so yeah. Jupiter and Saturn um, Neptune and Uranus I guess are called ice giants but they're not really icy they're just like a lot frozen colder. gas or they well yeah. they're they're still mostly gas um, but they're called they're so there's a complicated history behind the ice giant mm, thing mm-hmm. but it has to do with being beyond the point where ice where ice formed in the early solar system. So they were like made from ice, oh, ices actually, so they... but they're not frozen solid now. Hmm. But their moons are icy, the moons of those of those giant planets. Well, yeah. So I understand that some of the moons of the gas giants, like of, hmm. of Jupiter, 
might even be a place where we could land. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. really, really interesting stuff. So, so several of the moons of the giant planets have either like an icy surface with water underneath or uh, some kind of uh, surface that has liquid water below it in some way. So like, like Titan, uh, a moon of Saturn, has um, a very thick atmosphere and a surface that's frozen water rocks and liquid methane oceans, Ooh. which is really cool. And then apparently there's liquid water underneath that layer. Mm -hmm. um, and then some of the moons of Jupiter have sort of an icy surface and then a few kilometers down a liquid water ocean global like ocean. Europa is one of those is yeah, yeah, yeah 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 Europa is one of them mm -hmm. um Ganymede uh, uh Enceladus which is I guess a Saturn moon mm. so yeah so they're they're um a bunch of the the ice giants it's a, a bunch of the gas giant planets have or a bunch of the moons of the gas giants have um have places where we might find them they're some of the most likely places to find life in the solar system because oh, they have because the water, water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and they're, the reason they can have liquid water is because they're being sort of stretched and squeezed by the gravity of the giant planet in such a way that keeps the interior a little bit warm. Oh, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Huh. This stuff is nice. Yeah. All right, you All ready? Right. Yeah. You want to do the next one? All right. What are the planets doing? They're doing a lot of things, actually, aren't they? They're orbiting. They're orbiting? Yeah, they're, they're rotating and they're revolving. So, so they rotate on an axis, and then they revolve around and the sun. And they revolve around the sun. Yeah. But then our solar system's moving in the galaxy, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So they're also moving in the galactic arm. Yeah, in the, yeah. And then our galaxy's moving away from wherever it, the, the Big Bang was, or what? No, so the Big Bang was everywhere, so you can't really, oh. you can't move away. There's no center point that everything's moving away from. But the our galaxy, or our little group of galaxies, is moving away from other galaxies. Okay. Just because okay. the space in between is expanding. Um, but, uh, but we're, our galaxy is moving toward one of our nearby galaxies because mm. we're, we have, um, a gravitational attraction. attraction we're attracted there, yeah. to each other. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So the Andromeda galaxy is a giant spiral galaxy, a lot like our own, maybe a little bit more massive. And our galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy are coming in and, um, we're going to collide in about 4 billion years. Nice. It should be really cool. But we're not very dense, right? So we're unlikely to hit. Well, the stars won't hit each other. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So the stars will probably like just pass by, but the gravity of the two galaxies will make everything get all mixed up and, and stars will get flung out into empty space. And then, you know, the the black holes at the centers of the galaxies will probably merge and be really cool. That could be really nice. Yeah. I don't expect to be there to see it. No. No. Unfortunately. No, I mean, I, by that time, the... The sun will have baked off the oceans of the Earth and swallowed oh, so a couple we'll be gone anyway. So. Like, yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's cool. Yeah. All right. Ready for Final the last one. one? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. All right. Okay. Here we go. All right. What are the planets from smallest to largest? Smallest to largest. All right. All right. So Mercury. Mm -hmm. That's the first one. Venus. No. No. Mars. Mar oh, Mars. Oh, Mars. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Mars. Yeah. So Venus is almost as big as the Earth, but. Mars is like a half as big, something like that. I keep forgetting that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, All okay. right. So let's so, start over. Okay. Mercury. Mercury. Mars. Mars. Then Venus. Then Venus. Little, then Earth. A little smaller than us. Yeah. Then okay. Earth. Um, then after that, we've got Neptune. Neptune. And then Uranus. And then Uranus. Those are real close together. Okay. I always get those confused. Yeah. Neptune and then Uranus. Okay. Then Saturn. Then Saturn. And then Jupiter. Jupiter. Yep. Yeah. All right. That does it. That's all of them, right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. All right. All right. I think we did a great job. I think so, I think too. We're, yes. We, of course, we, we were rating ourselves, but yes, still, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, all right. Well, thanks for joining us for this. Thanks for asking Google questions about the universe. Uh, my name is Dr. Katie Mack. And I'm Dr. Laura Bottomley. Stay curious. Yeah. 